جيد نيكست تدريب نيكست تدريب وي هاف التدريب الثالث uh, ثالث وعشر which is the 13 it is أكمل كالمثال uh, complete as the example so they give you an example المثال this is something that uh, we've done a lot I'm not going to be doing these things and these these exercise if you are skipping them you are you are hurting yourself you're basically cheating yourself because we've talked about all of these things if you're not doing these are like math doesn't matter how many times you hear lectures and how much you think you know it unless you actually do them you would not be you know you'll not be comfortable this is how it is right so this is just verb conjugation and i've also mentioned to you that this kind of exercise you usually will not find them in moving forward because when they say sort morphology they don't talk about conjugation they talk about morphology how they move from one verb to a noun how how do you make a noun from the verb how do you make different types of noun like kitab kateb maktub kitabatan like this kind of morphology thing uh, so practice these things inshallah uh, it will be extremely beneficial i really don't want to go through this at all because we have we've gone through it so many times i think this one has all talk there are 12 unique pronouns in arabic language 12 uh, but there are 14 possible variations but you know one of them will be re repeating okay so for example here antuma is being repeated here these two are repeating so if you can do these conjugations and uh, feel comfortable right now they're only asking you to do what what kind of fail fail mudare but don't shy away from doing some maadi as well the past tense okay so the past tense you should be able to do this also so the past tense kataba you write kataba i think we've done a few of them pre in previously so just work on this thing this is something that's extremely important we've talked about this thing i just feel, don't feel like that we need to go through this thing again Jay. Uh, next one we have at Tadrib al Rabi Ashar, so uh, 14th exercise. It also says Akmil Kal Mithal, complete like the example. This one is also very easy. You know, I don't want to spend too much time uh, because when we talked about Kam, we mentioned that the Kam has a special construction that you follow. And then when we ask about Kam, we've talked about this one before plenty of times uh, in earlier chapters that we use a singular. Fatah state now. So, kam kitaban. How many books? So, how do you say how many pens? Kam kalaman. How do you say how many houses? Kam baitan. We don't say buyut. We don't use a plural tense. We say singular. Sometimes we use a different way. We say kam adadu. Uh, so, they want you to use sanawatu dirasa. Not dirasa, dirasa. So, you say kam adadu. What is the adad? Means what? Number. If you want to ask the how many numbers of year of study, you will say kam adadu sanawatu dirasa, uh, adadu sanawati dirasa, because these are what mudaf mudaf ilay. This is uh, mudaf, this is mudaf ilay, then this is mudaf, this is mudaf ilay. We talked about this one before, right? So this is something that I don't want to spend too much time. Just uh, know this is how you ask, because if you were to ask how many years instead of saying numbers, because look, I can ask in English how many numbers of years of study. Just like uh, this example. I can also ask you how many years of the study. You understand? So both ways I can ask. But now I'm asking you a question. If I ask how many years, instead of saying adat, if I say how many years of study, then I have to use the standard form. I have to say kam sanatan. You cannot say kam sanatan ad dirasa. You say lid dirasa. Okay, so for the studies. Because the answer would be, let's say three years. Thalathu sanawatin. You understand? So, for example, nawafed. What is nawafed? Who knows? Nafeda. Remember, nafeda is window. So, you want to know how many numbers. What they're basically showing, if you want to ask about number, then just follow this, uh, this pattern. Come adadu. Then you ask the number. Like you want to say, what is the number of something? Use the come adadu and then the idafa. How many numbers of books you have? Kam adadul kutub. You'll use this kind of form. Okay, makes sense. I think uh, if you just do few of them, it will be easy. Uh, this is very simple. I'll just do one here. Kam adadu sanawati dirasa saatu dirasa sa is the hours. How many hours of studies? You will say sa a dirasa because it's going to be in idafa format. Adadu, as you can say, okay, is idafa. Makes sense. Now, then we have the 15th exercise. 
عيد كتابة الجملة المستخدمة ما بين الأقواس. Aquas is a plural of قوس, which is the these brackets. They're talking these brackets. So عيد, uh, you should know this one. عيد means to repeat. كتابة الجملة, writing of the sentence. Repeat the writing of the sentence. مستخدما. مستخدما is another very important word. Anybody knows? To استخدم, to something. It is to use. The verb is استخدما. Okay, to, uh, to use. Using ما بين الأقواس. What's between the parentheses. Okay. So, they give an example. من, uh, ما الذي يدرس في المهد? ما الذي يدرس في المهد? So they want you to use the hua in order to answer the question. So you say hua yadrusu fil mahad. Then the, the next one, you, they want you to ex use here. So you can see here, tadrusu fil mahad. So basically, they just want you to make sure you understand changing the gender of the verb. Uh, and for the anta, you will say, anta tadrusu fil mahad. Make sense, guys? Very simple. This, is, this goes into the same exercise uh, we had previously, you know, going through all of the pronouns. Uh, for example, you have a talibu yaktubu darsa. The student is uh, writing the lessons. But if you're instead of a talib, you say anta, what do you say? Anta taktubu darsa. And how do you say anti and change this verb? Taktu bina. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Taktu bina. Okay, taktu bina. Anti taktu bina darsa. You you are the one who is writing the lesson. Jayid, at tadrib sadis ashar the sixteenth exercise. It says hiwar hiwar. You know it's a conversation. It says a talibul awal. It's not one student. It's talking about the first students. So we've also studied how do you say number in cardinal and ordinal. So this is ordinal form. A talib will awal the first student says, Come faslan. See, it's using the standard rule of the come. Come faslan fil am. Am is what? Huh? Sana. It's a am and sana, they mean the same things. So, how many fossil we have already studied here? It means seasons. How many seasons are in the year? Talibun, one student is as answering, fil ami arba tu fusulin. Okay, so the same rules, numbers, we've talked about this. So, fusul would be the plural of fossil. So in the year, four seasons. Here. Why did it say here? Here means she. Who can tell me why it's saying here? Yes, it's ghairakel. So when you have a plural of non-intellect, we don't use plural to describe them. We use singular feminine. So because we're talking fusul, which is a plural of um, non-intellect, so we say here. So they are ashita'u, winter. Al-kharif, okay? Al-sayif, and al-rabi. So winter, fall, summer, and uh, and spring. I think we went through all of them. Uh, then I'll call it that the student then saying, Wa mata tabda'u dirasatu bil mahad. Mata tabda'u dirasatu bil mahad. So when does the studies start in the institution? Okay. Bada yabda'u, we had it to begin at dirasatu. Okay, so as you can see, the dirasa has a, a dhamma, so that means this is the uh, door of uh, the file of the tabda. Tabda'u dirasatu bil mahadi fi fosli, fi fosli al kharif. So, so the study begins in the institution in the fosli al kharif. In what season? In the fall season. So far, so good. A talib, the student saying, wa kaifa, wa kaifa il tahakta bil mahad. I told you this word, uh, even now, sometimes when I look at it, it gives me, because you think it's Alif Lam, right? So you want to read it like a noun, but it's not. It says, Wa kaifa iltahakta. How iltahakta bil mahad? Who remembers iltahaka yaltahiku? Who remembers uh, this word? Iltahaka is to join, right? So how, kaifa is how. How did you join? This is in past tense. How did you join? And ta, ta means you. How did you join? Uh, the, remember, I told you iltahaka always has the harful jar preposition B. So how did you join uh, the mahad, the institution? That is the question. Uh, the talib, the student says, قَدَّمْتُ طَلَبًا إِلَىٰ عَمِيدِ الْمَهَادِ قَدَّمْتُ 
So I think you've been seeing a variation of this word many times, a uh, different way. So you have taqaddama and qaddama. So you have qaddama, qaddama, okay? And then you also have taqaddama, taqaddama. When you do sarf, you will understand uh, more what's going on here because uh, as you can see, these are just coming from he here, okay? Uh, which is also coming from qadam. So qaddama, it means, uh, the best way to understand is the meaning of this, and then you will understand. Qaddama, it means to submit something, to offer something. Okay? And this one is transitive verb. Qaddama is a transitive verb. So that means when you say Qaddama, you need to say that you have what you have did the Qaddam. What did you submit? What did you, you know, uh, offer? What did you present? So here you have to say something. So he said, Qaddam to Talaban. I have uh, submitted uh, a request. If we say taqaddama, it, this verb becomes intransitive. You understand? They, they pretty much have, have the similar meaning, but how you use that. One is transitive, one is not transitive. Taqaddama means also to be uh, offered, uh, to be advanced. Jayit, ila amidil mahad, to the dean of the uh, institution. So I have submitted a request to the, uh, to the dean of the institution. Then the student asks, "Wama, wama al bayanatu lati katabtaha fi fi talab." We had all of these words before. "Wama al bayanat," and what are the data or information? "Al lati katabtaha," which the uses of "al lati." I'm not sure if we had so much time uh, using it, but right now, as a simple things, you know that "al lati" means which, and this has variations. "Al lati" is for feminine because "bayanat" is feminine. If it was masculine, you would say alladhi. So what are the information which, okay, which katapta, uh, look what's happening. Katapta means that you, ha, ha refers to this information. What, what are the information that you wrote it in the request? By and large, most of the time, you will have some kind of pronoun that is connecting with the previous because this is one part, this is another part. There has to be one part, one something that is connecting to the other part. Okay, anyway, uh, inshallah, you will study them um, much more in details in the grammar class. But as a translation, you are asking, what are the information which you wrote it in the request? Make sense? Then he says, Talib uh, Kataptul Isma, I wrote the name. Uh, you have a father here because it's the object, right? Well, Jinsia, nationality, well, Umrah, Umr is age. What Diana is the religious muahil muahil adirasi means academic qualification, summa on one and then the address. All of them are getting fatha is because these are all object of kataba, the things that you've written. So it doesn't matter how many of them, as long as you're saying wa 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 wa, it will and summa has the same effect as wa. Also in English, I ate banana and apple, then mango so what happens then the mango becomes what mango is still your object things that you have eaten sometimes thinking from english perspective it might help you a little bit uh, then the, the student asks Wahal katapta anta hmm. i'm not going to explain what's happening but there's a very interesting um, sentence structure here which is saying hal and hal you know it's a question it's going to be yes no question hal katapta did you write anta you at talab. Did you write the translation here? Is that did you write the request yourself? It's, it has a similar meaning. So you might think, uh, I don't want to mention this one, you might think that this anta is the doer, but it's not. It is just coming as an, as an emphasis, meaning you're emphasizing, did you, you see this emphasis here, did you write the request? This anta is giving you that kind of uh, that kind of emphasis, and you can see the answer. He's saying uh, la no inani la uh, uh, It should be uh, sukun here. Inani la uhsinu al kitabata bil logatil arabiya. No, verily inani. This is li uh, li annani. Sorry, li annani. Uh, because I am not uhsinu means to be good at something. I'm not good at. What al kitabata bil logat al Arabi? I'm not good at writing Arabic. So ahsana is a very also another very good word. Ahsana yuhsinu is to be good at something. 
Okay, so I'm not good at uhsinu. That means I'm not good at what al kitabata. I'm not good at writing. Bilogatil Arabi. I'm not good at writing in Arabic language. Okay, then we have a talib. Then saying wa mani ladi katabalaka a talab. So man mani ladi who is the one? Okay, man, you know who al is the who kataba laka for wrote for you a talab. So who's the one who wrote the request for you? Then he says, Kata Katabahu Sadiqi Omar. So Kataba is the he wrote it. Who's the he? Sadiqi, my friend. So my friend wrote it. Who means it? Meaning it's talking about the talab. My friend wrote it. So what is Omar? Omar is the same thing what we talked about, the Badal. The Omar and Sadiqi, they're the same thing. And that's why Omar has a Dhamma. Okay? So he could have said, Katabahu Omar. It would have been the same thing, but he's just clarifying who's the Omar. Omar is my friend. Make sense? And then he says, Wa wajata Omar. Wajada, you know what wajada means to find wajada. Yajidu is to find wajata. Where did you find Omar? Talib, the student answers, Wajatuhu fi markazi, fi markazi mali al maliki faisalin. The same institution name that we had before. I found him, Wajatuhu. I found him in the institution of or the center of King Faisal, Lid Dirasatil Islamia for Islamic studies. This whole thing is, I think, the name of uh, name of the institution. Make sense? Uh, and then he says, uh, We know this verb, ta'allama, ya ta'allamu means to learn. And where did he learn? He who Omar learned Arabic language. Then he, he's saying, uh, okay, ta'allamaha, he learned it. So why is it how all of a sudden? Because he's talking about feminine, al-luga. Ta'allamaha fi mahadil lugatil arabiyati bi jamiyati ummil qura. So he learned uh, it in the institution of Arabic in the University of um, Ummul Qura. Wa aina jamiyatul ummil qura. See, very simple stuff. And why is the uh, University of Ummul Qura Jamiat Ummul Ummul Qura fi Madinati Makata al Mukarramati? The University of Ummul Qura is in the Makkah al Mukarramah, city of Makkah, basically, right? Wa hal ta'allam ta shay'an min al lughat al Arabiyya al an? Wa hal ta'allam ta? Have you learned or did you learn actually? Did you learn shay'an? Shay shay means anything. Okay, Shayan, have you learned anything min al-lughati al-Arabiya from the Arabic language al-an now? Have you learned anything? Naam, wa ana al-an atakallamu ma'ak bil-lughati al-Arabiya. He's like, yes, and I am, wa ana al-an, I am right now speaking. Takallama ya takallamu means to speak. Okay, so the verb is takallama. Takallama ya takallamu means to speak. So atakallam means I'm speaking. So I'm speaking mark with you in Lugat al-Arabiya. So he's saying, of course, because I'm speaking with you in Arabic language. Shukran, afwan. So here's another expression. When somebody says sh sh shukran, you say afwan. Afwan can also be used as an excuse me. So you want to pass through someone uh, or you want to get someone's attention, you can say afwan. Uh, then we have, uh, next one, we have at tadribu sahabi ashar. Okay, so we have the 17th exercise. Uh, it says Akmil. So this kind of, uh, this one, it's kind of difficult doing it because they're not giving us what kind of information they want. And, uh, you know, it, it would have been much better if they gave us, you know, a set of words that you need to choose to fill them up. Then we would know what they want because uh, some of them are not trivial uh, i mean some of them you have to kind of know what actually they want because it's different ways of doing this you can you can make a sentence different ways you can use verb you can use noun you can use this and that so some of them are easy some of them are not so uh, i'll just do a few of them uh, whatever you can understand or uh, whatever you can do that's fine i'll give you some example what they want here so it says arsala umaru talaban ila ila what then it says, So this one would be easy. Omar uh, sent a request to, where did he send a request? They are telling you, So it seems like they are pretty much giving everything, except that you can say, Amid here, the dean. 
So he's sending to the dean of the institution of Arabic language. Then he says, be jamiati ummil Quran. Uh, these are fine. Then he says, kataba Omar al-talabi al-bayanat al Okay, so this is here. We need a harful jar. We need a preposition. So what preposition goes here? So you understand what he's trying to say, right? Uh, talab is the request, of course, al-bayanat al is the following information. Use fee. So Omar wrote in the request following information, okay? So then uh, all this information you have to write, uh, he's giving some of them al-jinsia, so you can say al-ism, okay? So he writes the name, al-jinsia, uh, maybe al-umar, the age, al diana he wrote a few things, right? Uh, here he can, you know, it's got to be Mu'ahil, remember, Mu'ahil, this is easy to know, at dirasi uh, the academic uh, qualification, something like that, one one. One one is something else here, or is there, even the punctuation is not clear. So honestly, even for me, I don't know what they want. How do they want us to fill this thing up? Uh, okay, so if we have a B here, B il mahad. So what is the one verb we know it goes here? We can use. So this would be the file, the door. You can say il tahaka, right? Il tahaka. Il tahaka. Omaru bil mahadi. Right, something like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you spend a little bit of time, you will be able to find. Uh, if it's too complicated, don't worry too much. Uh, I don't like uh, this exercise so much, only because it's a good exercise for sure, but it's ambiguity. There's a lot of ambiguous. Uh, it's not clear to me even what how they want us to look at the last one. Last one says Omar. What do you think is gonna go here? Uh, the clue is that we have two semicolons, not semicolon, I mean two columns. Yes, qala. Yes, good. Qala or yakul, whichever. Uh, you can qala would be the past tense, or you can say yakul would be the present tense. So he says, ana al ana akra'u. No, you cannot. You cannot have a file here because the file is akra. So it would be ana. Okay, ana is already here. So akra is ana. So the file is already there. Remember, uh, this is another uh, tricky grammar rules. When you have akra, like in a first person, you cannot have an explicit file. You know, you cannot say akra u ana. Uh, that's, that's not going to work. So only the third person can bring a file. So you can say yakra u Muhammad. Then the Muhammad is the file. So we can say kutuban. We can say kutuban. Okay. Now I read books uh, in Arabic language. So you see, you got to put a little bit of thought in here. It's not that straightforward, uh, but I just hope there was a little bit more guidance, like saying use this, 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 you know, or use um, nouns or use verbs or use prepositions, you know, something like that. It's just all over the place. You know, it's not clear. So even hal we can use. The only thing would be uh, because of the akra, the kara is, is a, it's a transitive verb. It can be intransitive also. Uh, the kutub would be good. But what, what about hal? Let's just, just think for a little bit because we talked about the hal uh, since you brought it up. Let's say uh, what would that mean? At least we can practice the concept of a hal here. We can say happily, like I'm reading Arabic language happily, Saidan. Saidan. Happily. Now I'm reading happily below the Arabic. Reading is a, a transitive verb as far as I know. So maybe this would be a better choice than, uh, but uh, in the context, if we know what he's, uh, I'm reading, you know, then it might work. But as you can see, we can also use Saidan if it wasn't a transitive verb, stuff like that. See, you got to put a lot of thought in this exercise. You know, uh, you have to know the context, the text that you're reading, the vocabularies of that text, and then, you know, uh, some grammar things here and there. Jayid. So uh, next one, we have At-Tadrib al-Thamin Ashar. So we have uh, 18th exercise. And this is also another problem because um, it says fahmul masbu. It's like understanding of listening, listening comprehension, basically. But we don't have a listening materials, so we are kind of stuck. So what we usually do is we look through the, these phrases, see if we can find something interesting. Uh, nothing here. Uh, it's talking about the street. These are just uh, names. Same thing going on here. Nothing interesting. Uh, Sadaqallahul Azim. Uh, we talked about this one. 
that Allah spoke in the truth. Uh, Subhanallah, Hiradim, these are some expressions probably asking what to say after reading Quran. This is my guess, you know, then it would be this one. Or it, it might be asking what do you read when you start the Quran, then this would be the answer. So uh, did we talk a little bit about uh, the issue with the kana and the present tense verb? Uh, basically, it makes it into past continuous tense, right? So if you say yajlisu, that means he is sitting in the library of the institution or center. He is sitting, basically. If you say jalasa, he sat, right? When he's sitting in the present tense, a jalasa would be sat. So what happens when you say kana? Kana makes it, uh, of course, you know, the verb kana is basically a verb to be, like in the past tense, uh, which is was. So you would say into past continuous tense. So he was sitting. And in some contexts, you can also say he used to. The most common you would want to do it is put, put in the past uh, continuous tense, like he was sitting. Because the used to would be when, uh, you know, it, it needs a little bit more context. Okay, without context, he used to, it's uh, probably would not be the best translation. But definitely when you say he used to, this is, this is the phrase you will be using. Make sense? So this is something to note. Uh, we did all of this. Uh, there's nothing here. Nothing here. So, and then we have uh, this writing, which is Ta'abir uh, Tahriri. So this is something that we also ignore because we're not doing any writing. I think our main goal is the reading. So that would conclude our, our 25th lesson, which is the first lesson of the unit five, which is the last unit of the book. Takes time, guys, right? It does take time.